the best void epic for every single faction in Raid Shadow Legends, starting off with the good old Sylvan Watches, where it's just a choice between two, right? We've got Ayla and Nia, and don't get me wrong, I love uh, Ayla Lifebraid. I think that she's awesome, particularly because I'm really, really lacking healers on my account, and she brings a big block debuffs and a huge team-wide uh, ally heal, which is great for me. But when it comes down to who's really the cream of the crop, Dude, you're not going to do much better than Nia. Nia just kind of flourishes in longer duration fights. She's amazing into Hydra particularly, which is great. Partially because of the A1, which is an attack all enemies with a 30% chance of placing strong decreased speed for a couple of turns. Just an amazing A1 right off of the get-go. Um, on her A2, this is where her real gimmick comes into play. It's a remove all debuffs from a target ally and then heal them for a billion. So it's just single target. And if the target of this skill is not White Dryad Nia... Decrease the cooldown of all of the target skills by two turns. The value of this obviously cannot... Be Dude, it's bookable down to a 310 cooldown as well. Are you kidding me? Over the course of a longer fight, um, yeah, this is just going to give you untold levels of value. And then on the A3, she also brings ally protect and strengthen on all allies as well. So yeah, when all said and done, a little bit of an easy choice in the Sylvan Watches. If you disagree with any of my picks, by the way... Play along in the comments. We've got to be some areas where we disagree. Shadowkin might even be one of them where we go into what a Boro facing off against Genbo and Tyre. For me, I feel like there's really a clear. Is, is it clear? Yeah, this might be coming down to personal preference just a little bit. Just a little bit here and there on some of these picks. So hell, if we disagree, we disagree, man. A Boro is great as she is. I don't know, dude. I feel like Genbo is just too much of a Giga Chad. I feel like he's just too insane. I feel like he's just too much of a specialist in what he does, and that is, of course, Arena. He's got a double hitter on the A1 with a chance of stealing one random buff. On the A2, it's an attack all enemies with a 100% chance buck of decreasing the duration of all buffs by one turn. Also, this effect cannot be resisted on crits, which, I mean, as soon as you start getting into decent ranks uh, in Arena, you're going to start to face opponents with more and more resist stats. And so Genbo is just a great answer that kind of scales up into that. You know, you can get a lot of use out of a Genbo if you pull him fairly early on in your account, man, which I have, man. I managed to grab Genbo in the last uh, 2x Void Chat event, so that's awesome. Um, and then on the A3, just to top it all off, he brings his own increased crit rate and increased crit damage buffs, meaning, of course, you can only build this guy with 70% crit rate, and that will do fine. That will be completely enough, and he's kind of good to go. Um, and then, of course, he also gets the extra turn as well. And, of course, actually, his passive, as long as he's under an increased attack buff, right? So you've got an increased attack champion on your team, then he'll also ignore unkillable buffs. So, um, yeah, that's the that's the real cherry on the top. All right, guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and input code GAMELEAP to get your hands on a free energy refill, 10 free experience, brews, and 100,000 silver. This code was recently renewed. And so if you hadn't used it before, it should be good to use once again. Of course, I've already used it, and so it's going to say invalid promo code to me. But, yeah, if you've already used it, Share code GAMELEAP with your clan mates and help your bros out. The clan versus clan is coming up, goddammit. Everybody can use a little bit of extra boostage. Continuing on with the good old dwarves who are just hiding behind my camera right now because they're so short. We're going to go ahead and check out the Void Epics all up on here, man. And dude, I don't know, is Demitha just a clear winner? There's some champs in here that I love, don't get me wrong. Gala, are you kidding me? She's an absolute badass. But I think that Demitha, pound for pound, the, um, the impact that a single champion can have on your account. When it comes to Demitha, especially if you're like an early account, maybe you pull the Demitha in your first ever like 2x void event or something as a newer player. The splash that she can make on your account is just unbelievable. Basically unlocking unkillable clan boss teams and well, block damage clan boss teams in her case. Which just leads into you being able to clear Nightmare Clan Boss and Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. And those rewards for an early game account, getting your hands on those rewards from those difficulties of Clan Boss is just so, so important indeed. So, yeah, Demitha, block damage, double Demitha teams, uh, Demitha man-eater teams. You can run solo Demitha teams as well and get away with it uh, in Clan Boss. She's just crazy as hell. And yeah, she's got to be my pick for the dwarves now. Knight's Revenant. How many epic voids we got to work with here? It's a pick between four, and dude, I like quite a lot of these guys. Skull and Reaper's not bad. Skull Crown, extremely, extremely good. Nuka, Whisper, single target boss killing machine. Dude, I think for just sheer ludicrousness alone, it has to be Whisper, right? This is like every single Doom Tower boss apart from like maybe Nether Spider. She just absolutely turns them into powder. <laughs> That's it, really. So, Whisper's kit, if you don't know how she works, she is an extra 10 generating machine, right? The A1 has a chance of applying uh, Weaken, which is great and all, but the rest of her kit is where it really goes down, right? The A2 uh, is an attack one enemy, places a strong increased attack buff and strong increased crit rate buff on this champion for two turns before attacking 
if the target has higher max HP than this champion. So if you're using her into the correct content, right, which is she's just a boss annihilator, then so they'll always have higher max HP than Whisper. So she should always have these buffs, meaning you can build her with just 70% crit. That's fine, right? You can totally get away with that. Uh, it will also ignore defense if the target is under a weakened debuff, which is kind of crazy as hell. Now, on the A3, it's a double hitter. Grants an extra turn if the target is under decreased defense and weaken debuffs. Now, you should obviously have her in a team where these two conditions are always met so that you always get this extra turn proc. And then we move on to the passive where you just flat out have a 10% chance of granting an extra turn whenever this champion lands a critical hit, okay? So you've got to pay, pay attention to the fact that it's a double hitter on the A3, first of all, okay? So that's a couple of crits right there. Then it's ideal if you place your Whisper in a Relentless set, so she just has an 18% chance every turn of getting an extra extra turn okay and then you gotta bear in mind that extra turns can actually proc extra turns okay so you get an extra turn from relentless then you swing in with the a3 and then you get an extra turn from the a3 as well and because you crit a couple of times with the a3 you can get another extra turn from your passive okay and then with that extra turn that can actually proc relentless again because <laughs> that's another extra turn right and so it's not uncommon for whisper to just snowball out of control and just get like four turns and just be clobbering the hell uh, out of the boss. What's that goddamn aura again? Ally attack in dungeons 29%, so that also helps out there as well. And uh, yeah, the other part of a passive that he didn't even quite read yet, increased damage inflicted on bosses by 20%, so she's just an absolute executioner of a void epic and a definite level 60 should you grab her. All right, scooting up along onto the Dark Elves, the void epics that we have are Lua, Sila, and Madam Ceres. Good 10 meter control on Sila. Is Lua the triple hitter? She's a triple hit style nuke. You can build around, she can do a job for you, but I think that the winner is probably gotta be Madam Ceres. Oh my God. Actually, how often do you see that, man? I just checked her reviews real quick. She is actually a straight five on arena offense. Like, you don't often see that, okay? That's exceptionally, exceptionally rare that you see a straight five and just everybody agrees that she is just a queen in a certain area of the game. Just well into other areas of the game too, but specifically for Arena, an absolute chan. So, she has a chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn on her A1. And the chance of applying the fear goes up the more debuffs the enemy is under, so that's grit. On the A2, attack all enemies with a 50% chance bucked of stealing one random buff from each target. Stealing one random buff from each target, right? Not just removing. So that's an extra little bonus right there. Also place a block debuff buff on allies for two turns if any buff is stolen. And then place a true fear debuff for one turn on enemies who have buffs stolen. One skill doing so much goddamn stuff. The block debuffs alone is amazing, to be honest. And everything else is just kind of like a very, very solid bonus. And so after you've opened up with the A2 and you've peeled off some buffs from the enemy, maybe placed some true fears and most importantly got up the block debuffs on your team, then you swing in with the A3 on the next turn, remove all buffs from enemies, so anything they've applied in the interim gets removed, and then you place strong decrease attack and decrease defense debuff on all enemies for a couple turns as well. Now, of course, you can alternate the order of these skills in whichever which way you want, whichever way it's going to work in the team that you're using her in, but yeah, her utility in any kind of PvP content is just absolutely ridiculous. So, let's move on ahead to the demon spawn, where I think we've got another four, oh, never mind, three void epics here as well. We have Hedma, Umbrella Enchantress, and Skimforce. I feel like there's going to be some disagreement on this one. I feel like this one might be pretty contentious, man. I do, uh, like, I don't mind uh, Pedma. I think that she's fine. Skimforce, I know that this guy has a little bit of a cult following. Uh, I believe he has some really, really solid kind of uh, debuff mitigation. Transfers all debuffs from this champion to a target enemy, then attacks the target. Steals 100% of the target's 10 meter if this attack is a crit. Um, he's also got an attack all enemies. Strong decrease attack, and then after attacking, transfers all debuffs from his teammates onto him. So he kind of just, it's like a huge debuff sponge uh, for your team. And I know that he's got a little bit of a cult follow on, man, and that people do respect Skimforce. For me, I feel like I've got to put Umbral Enchantress just ahead. This is a champ that I do have, and honestly, very, very unique champ indeed, man. Let's actually start off with the A2 into Hydra. It's an attack all enemies, 100% chance of placing block buffs debuff for three turns on a three turn cooldown as well. So easy 100% uptime on this and obviously incredibly, incredibly valuable uh, into Hydra. And also into Hydra, you'd probably just want to go ahead and disable uh, the A3, to be honest, but in all other forms of content, especially any kind of wave content that exists, this provoke is unbelievable. Also into Arena as well, of course. Um, attacks all enemies on the A3, 100% chance of placing a provoke debuff for two 
turns, right? 2 turn provoke debuff on everybody is crazy as hell. It obviously can't weak hit as well because she's void. Uh, then you place an unkillable buff on this champion for two turns. You also place a block active skills debuff on this champion for five turns. So you nerf yourself. Now, most arenas, okay, are going to be over before the provoke ends anyway, okay? The two turn provoke on an entire enemy team is usually enough to kind of get you ahead enough to just win the round, right? To just win the game. And into wave based content, I mean, the wave of enemies is usually dead before the five turns is up anyway. Then you move on to the next wave of enemies. And then what happens? You lose all of your buffs and debuffs anyway. And so having this five turn block active skills debuff just doesn't matter into things like Doom Tower waves and stuff like that. Just a very, very weird and interesting champion. There you go. Umbral Enchantress. I'd say that she'd probably be my pick for the best void epic of the demon spawn. Let's move up on into orcs. I mean, we've got Seer, we've got Tuhak, we've got Tolf and Liburga, and it's gotta be not Tolf. Don't worry about it, man. Oh my god. I tell you what, dude. I tell you what, I pulled Tolf in the latest uh, Voidjad opening event, and I was like, okay, maybe he's got some uses somewhere or something, you know? Maybe I can make like some kind of meme build out of this guy or something. And someone in the comments was talking about, oh, he actually can solo uh, certain content in the game as well. So, okay, I'm trying to get my hopes up. And then, like, every other content creator I'm watching on YouTube, Hell Hades, Ash, whatever, I'm just ripping Tolf to shreds in their videos. I'm like, oh, God. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to cope so hard and just pretend that he's going to be a good champ for me. But, oh, yo, 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 yo. He might be a project in the future to see what we can actually get him to do. But I think that as far as Void Epics go here, I mean, it's got to be Sia, right? It's just got to be. Chance of an extra 10 on the air 1. She brings increased crit rate uh, and weaken debuff on all enemies, actually, uh, on the air 2 which is just great. And then she has the Giga Chad Nuke. Uh, is she like one of the strongest hitting, if not the strongest hitting epic support in the game? By like a lot? Yeah, she, so she's a support champion, but remove all buffs from all allies and enemies, then attack all enemies. Damage increases according to the number of removed buffs, okay? So you basically build a team with just as many buffs as humanly possible. Um, of course, she's peeling buffs off of enemies as well. And then she converts all of those stolen buffs, all of those removed buffs, into just one massive wave of damage. And the best part is, is that even if this doesn't one-shot the entire enemy lineup, uh, it has a 50% chance of placing a sleep debuff on all enemies for one turn. And the chance increases per buff removed. So even if you don't one-shot everybody, the sleep will still land, and if she's attacking last on your team, that sleep will go unbroken, and um, half the enemy team will miss a turn, you know? So, great. Our man getting towards the end. Next up, we have the Skinwalkers, and I think that there's really, I mean, Frenzy, some HP ban action, but I think there's only really one choice here, and it's got to be a Kemptum. A Kemptum is just an absolute god. Quick kit breakdown. I'm actually going to start off with the A2, because that's really the backbone uh, of the kit. Attacks all enemies. Are you kidding me? three times 75 percent chance booked of increasing the duration of any hex debuffs on enemies by 110 very very good indeed if enemies are not under a hex debuff each hit instead has a chance of placing a hex debuff for a couple of turns so in general most enemies gonna end up with about three turns worth of hex debuff on them after this a2 has gone off which is just great and then on the a1 attack one enemy tournament get out of my face what what's all this tournament action Christ, I'm trying to read here. Okay, attacks one enemy three times, each hit with a chance of placing poison for two turns. If the target is under a hex debuff, each hit will also have a chance of applying debuff spread, taking one random debuff from the target and placing it on all enemies, which means poisons everywhere. Now, as if all, like, on its own, that would be pretty good, right? Hex, hex duration, debuff spread, poison's on the A1, it's a triple hit. I mean, you get some utility into finite as well. Um, that's all great, and then the passive just takes it. Dude, this guy is like a low tier legendary in in just in terms of what he does, you know. Eighty percent chance, or rather, hundred percent chance on the passive bucked of inflicting damage from one poison debuff to enemies under a hex debuff whenever their allies receive damage from poison debuffs. What does this mean? TLDR: Every time a poison ticks, everybody else takes a poison tick of damage as long as they're under a hex debuff. Spider, Hydra, ridiculous. And I mean, it goes without saying, obviously, triple hit, a chance of just spamming the crap out of poisons. Clan boss, dragon. Yeah, you get the idea, man. A Kemptum, good in a lot of areas of the game. 
amazing that he scales so so highly up into hydra next moving on to the lizard men now when it comes to voids we've only got a choice between three here slicks is actually quite new he's actually a very very good uh, epic quality, uh, quality nuka to be honest bring some self buff uh, buffs which is great and also to be honest lizard men kind of lack just solid damage dealers and so if you do have yourself a slicks is kind of left over from the past fusion or whatever or you pull him uh he is actually a good one to kind of hung, uh, hang on to broadmoor is of course an epic quality reviver and i mean enough said to be honest he's very very solid as well honestly scathix is he actually gonna be my pick there's gonna be some disagreement at this one for sure man i don't know i feel like honestly it's a three-way tie it's a three-way tie uh but I think I'm going to go for Scathix just to be a hipster. That's really all there is to it. I think that Scathix does well into just lots of different areas of the game. And so for versatility points, I think I'm going to go with Scathix. Okay. Let's break down his kit, man. Strong uh, decrease speed debuff on his A1. Really, really good start. Always very, very nice to have. On the A2, attack all enemies. Has a 100% chance booked of stealing one random buff from each enemy. Again, it's a buff steal, not a buff removal. That's great. And honestly, the higher up into things like Doom Tower and stuff, I'm starting to push on my account now. My account being six months old, you know. We're making progress where we can. Uh, the higher I push up into Doom Tower, and I start to take longer to get waves dead, like waves of enemies dead in secret rooms and that kind of thing, the more I'm starting to value things like buff removal and block enemy buffs and stuff like that you know uh, a skill like this very very good indeed into like later and more difficult uh kind of wave content where the fight is definitely going to be more drawn out and things like enemy um god block debuffs and uh strong increased defense those kind of things you know unkillable things like that start to become really really annoying <laughs> scathix is a really, really good answer to stuff like that and on the a3 brings a remove all debuffs from all allies then place a block debuffs buff and a shield buff on all allies for a couple of turns again just very very good additional survivability there too i think scathix is just nice and versatile okay god i don't know am i gonna regret putting that guy as my pick for lizard men Maybe. Like I said, I, I think it's very, very close between the three. They all have very, very good uses indeed, man. It's a tough pick. Comes out of personal preference, that one, I think. Next up, we have the Ogryn tribes. We have Uragrim, which some people like. I don't know. I'm not I'm, I'm not a big fan of Uragrim. You can see I've pulled him. I don't think I'm going to level this guy at all. Skrank is obviously amazing. Love this guy. Massive AoE HP banner. Um, yeah. Gotta love him. Skrank is very, very good indeed. I think I'm just going to have to go with Maneater, though. My pick, personally. Dude, why does he look so crap, dude? <laughs> He's just an ogre with some body paint, man. Just some mustard, like, slathered across his skin, you know? I think Maneater and just bringing his unkillable buff, um, bookable down to a 510, you know? A couple Maneaters, um, or a Maneater and a Demetha to throw into an un unkillable clan boss team and just unlock that area of content in the game for your account is just too big of a deal to not put him as the best void epic for Og uh, Ogren tribes? I don't know. Skrank or Maneater? Surely that's who it is, right? Skrank, it's got to be Skrank or Maneater. I'm going to go ahead and go with Maneater uh, for the Ogren tribes. Just too, too important. Next up, we have the Barbarians, of which there are only three void epics in here. Harkin, Suwai, Skytred, Shaman. They all suck. That's my take. Okay, this was a really tough choice, not because there were like two or three really good options, but because they're all kind of bad. I think I have to go with Sky Touch Chairman, which to be fair, look, she doesn't suck. She doesn't suck, okay? In fact, she may even be a little touch underrated, man. I'm going to put some respect on Sky Touch Chairman, dude. She has a very, very, very interesting kit. And to be honest, I might do a video sometime soon just talking about the weirdest champions in Raid Shadow Legends that just... They just do stuff that other champions don't do. That They have, like, very, very unique mechanics. She is one of them, man. So, the A1. Attack all enemies. Awesome. Okay. Heals uh, by 15% of damage inflicted if this champion has less than 50% HP. Which, fair enough. Boost this champion's 10 meter by 20% instead if this champion has 50% HP or higher. Okay. So, already a pretty interesting A1. You might be thinking, okay... Stun set? Maybe. It's an attack all on the A1, right? Maybe you could put her in a stun set, except you can't, right? Skytrid Shaman is most often equipped, from what I've seen, in immunity sets. She's like the only champion I've encountered so far in raid that is slammed so readily and so um so perfectly, really, in an immunity set. But we'll get to that in just a sec. On the A2, it's a remove all debuffs from all allies, then place a block debuffs buff and a revive on death buff on all allies for a couple of tents. But dude, the passive is where it just gets 
insane, right? It just gets bizarre, it gets crazy, right? The passive damage this champion by 10% of their max HP at the start of each turn, okay? So she takes almost like a bleed of damage at the start of every turn. Heals all allies except Skyrim Shaman, equal to half of the champion's current lost HP. Then place a decreased speed debuff on this champion for one turn at the start of each turn. Also has a chance of placing a fear debuff on this champion for one turn. I mean, it's just bizarre. It's just weird. It's just crazy, man. But that's why she's put in a immunity set, right? So that she can avoid the decreased speed debuff. She can avoid the fear debuffs, that kind of thing. And then the amount of healing she offers, especially as she's losing HP, is kind of crazy as hell, right? And of course, the revive on death effect and stuff like that. Very, very useful into arena, as well as the uh, block debuffs buff as well, of course. Also very, very useful into arena. And to be honest, as far as I can tell, she's actually quite a bit underrated in the in-game reviews as well. According to hellhades.com, she's like five stars, spider, dragon, ice golem, frost spider, and then she's four stars, nether spider, griffin, dreadhorn, eternal dragon. <laughs> And even Iron Twins and Sand Devil, very, very good as well. And so, dude, there's something to this champion as long as you have her in the correct team comp and you've built her out correctly. It's kind of like a beginner to intermediate style player, though. I gotta admit, Skytouch Shaman, while she is gonna be my pick for Barbarians, I'm glad I didn't pull this gal. She seems intimidating for a newer player to kind of figure out. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna move on, uh, all up on to Sacred Order. What do you guys think of Skytouch Shaman, by the way? Would you guys build her out if you were to pull her? Okay, so Secret Order, we've got four Void Champions to choose from. Dude, this is impossible. This is an unenviable position to be in. Inquisitor Shamel versus Godseeker Aniri. I mean, oh my god. Like, what does your account need more? You know, a free path to absolutely trivialize uh, Sand Devil? Or an extremely stable, mega reliable answer to uh, Head of Torment in Hydra that you're basically going to use in your account forever? You know, I actually don't know. I think I'm probably just going to go with Inquisitor Shemel because Hydra is an area of the game where I'm looking to progress right now and I would love to have a Shemel uh, on my roster to work with. Whereas I feel like Sand Devil can at least wait for it. But Godseek is really good at like, like a billion areas of the game, right? I mean, she's just awesome everywhere. Oh, God, it's, it's just impossible. It's just, it's actually just impossible to choose. Maybe it's got to be Godseeker. Like Shemel is, is just more specialized. I'm going to spotlight Shemail anyway, because I think that he's cool as hell. I think Aniri is also really, really cool. Don't get me wrong, but oh my god. Okay, basically Shemail trivializes one of the Hydra heads. That's it. So for any newer players watching, the head of Torment in the Hydra boss basically has a whole bunch of mechanics, including a passive that are constantly applying fear and sometimes true fear effects uh, on your team. Having Inquisitor Shamel on your team, dude, read the passive, man. Each critical hit fills this champion's turn meter by 7.5%. Whenever an ally receives a fear or true fear debuff from an enemy, this skill will instantly remove the debuff and fill the le uh, team leader's turn meter by 15%. Inquisitor Shamel is just going to be my pick simply based on that, although everyone is going to disagree about that in the comments <laughs> which is fine by the way i know that some of this is going to come down to where your account is and which champ you would want more at the time uh, of watching this video and for me of recording this video so for me it would probably be shamel but god would it i still don't even know screw it i'm just gonna move on man okay so we've got high elves and their void epics four to choose between i mean this is also an impossible choice man this is also just an impossible choice it just depends which utility you value more and Drissia's? or Ethelins. God, it's like a 50-50 split, man. This is ridiculous. How the hell am I supposed to choose? I don't want to be a pussy, man. I want to actually make sure that I pick one for every single faction, even if a lot of folks might disagree with that. I think most people are going to go with Andrissia, to be honest, uh, who are watching this video. Me, I think I'm going to go ahead and spotlight Ethelin instead. Rightly or wrongly, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's pretty close between these two. Uh, Ethelin, the Golden Man. So it's A1, plus a shield buff on this champion, equal to 10% of the damage dealt for two turns. It's fine. Also, heals the champion by 10% of the damage dealt. Uh, if their HP is less than half, so that's fine. On the A2, attack all enemies two times. Here we go, man. Fully bucked up. This is a 410 cooldown. 100% chance on the first hit of placing a block active skills debuff for two turns. Very, very nice indeed uh, into wave content. Very nice indeed, of course, into arena. And the second hit has a 100% chance of placing true fear for one turn if enemies are not under the block active skills debuff. So if one of them misses or is resisted, then it'll try and place the true fear instead. It's just like a nice little fail safe. But I think what's additionally cool about this guy, especially into PvP, right, is that on his A3, he brings increased crit damage for three turns and increased accuracy by 50% 
then grants an extra 10 on the air 3 and so dude the amount of accuracy this son of a gun can stack up and then boost up with that 50 percent plus accuracy um is nutty as hell and just makes it much much easier for him to clock in his air 2 and so oi 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 i'm gonna go with ethylene I feel like most, but probably like 70% of people would say Andrisia in, instead. And you know what? That's fine, man. Bit of disagreement makes the video more interesting. So there it is. As for Banner Lords, what do we got here, man? We got four Void Epics all up in here. Rowan, Azul, Warcaster. Oh, wait. There's Estelle. She's obviously the best. No doubt at all about it. The A1, chance for decrease in the tag is 10 meter by 10%, which is fine. On the A2, attack all enemies. 100% chance booked. What the hell, man? Did she just live in a library? What is this? How many books does she require, man? That's a lot. Eight skill books just to max out the year two. Wow. And to get a cooldown reduction as well. So it's actually quite important. So if you've got the skill books, then Ursula on a 310 cooldown. 100% chance of placing decrease attack debuff for two tens. Also places increased attack buff on all allies for a couple of tens as well. So that's great. Double whammy. And then on the A3, revive all dead allies with 75% HP, then fill their 10 meters by half. Also places 60% increased defense buff and strengthen buff on allies for three tens as well. So once they've been revived, they are extremely difficult to bring down again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Ursula. Amazing. I don't, I don't think I really need to make a kiss for Ursula the Border. She's clearly the best Void Epic uh, for the Banner Lords. All right, guys, one more time, and go ahead and input promo code GAMELEAP and share it with your clanmates to get them 10 free experience brews, free energy refill, and 100,000 silver men. It was recently fixed up by Plarium, so it is back active once again. Well, if you haven't used it already, that is. Remember, boys, if you're looking to kickstart a new raid Shadow Legends account, then do so by clicking on my promo link down below at the top of the video description box. Doing so will kickstart your new account with a free epic champion in the form of the lovely, the stupendous, the stunning Rector Drath S tier support champion that you'll get for free as soon as your account hits level 25. So make sure to hit that link the best possible way to kickstart your new raid account. All right, thanks for watching, guys. And we're going to catch all of you all just a tad bit later, man.